if we could for just a second get into a, a time capsule, uh, a, a, some mechanism by which we could jump out 20 years in the future and get out and just take a look around. Just look for a second and, and evaluate the world that was being lived in at that moment in time and then got back in our capsule and came right back to now. We would discover a few things. I believe that we would discover that education as a whole, the systems, the mechanisms, and the approaches had radically shifted. That we had gotten to the point over the next several years of realizing that the models that we have today are models that are just ineffective. That one person standing with all the knowledge, speaking to a whole group of people who are sitting there doing next to nothing, listening, trying to pass knowledge that way, is just a really poor way of education. We would discover that maybe colleges and the debt that people have to get into would radically have been transformed over 20 years. But let's just push off the education for a second and talk about neuroscience. I think we'd discover, as we've seen over the last 10, 15 years, how much more we're learning about the way the brain works because of fMRIs and the studies that come from that, that fundamentally everything had shifted, that what we know today even about the way the brain works had impacted not just the, the new fields that are opening up, neuromarketing and neuroeconomics, but that it would have played out across every different aspect of the world we lived in. See, I'm not talking about our cars floating in space. I'm not talking about uh, anything th that we see in the sci-fi movies. I'm talking about the fact that we're sitting here at a time where so much is shifting and changing. The technology world that we're in has been shifting and changing for 20 years. I started building one of the first web applications, connecting a website to a database and moving that back and forth in 1995. We're now in 2015. It's been 20 years. And just about everything that I knew in 1995 has been flipped on its head by now. And there's every expectation as we're seeing people use mobile more than desktop ever before, people using text more than email, ever before, that we can expect that things will radically shift over the next 20 years. Technology is changing, neuroscience is changing, education is changing. I could go on, but that's not my point. See, my point is that with all this stuff that's changing, with everything that is being adjusted and tweaked, it's easy to think right now at this point where you're at, it's easy to think that you're stuck, you're held back, that you're just going to be doing this, whatever this is, for the next several years, and you're not even sure that you see a future. And I want to tell you is everything's shifting, everything's changing. It's like when you're looking at a freeway and there's an on-ramp. You know, if, if the freeway is going fast, if there's a carpool lane and cars are moving quickly... The only time you can get into the flow is an on-ramp, right? If you're, if you're looking at a metro station, you can't get into the train when the train's moving. You have to wait till it gets to a stop. Then you can board the train. The on-ramps to the things that are shifting and changing, the on-ramps to the world are many. They're myriad and they're everywhere. And the reality is that the reason you haven't stepped onto the train, the reason you haven't boarded the highway through that on-ramp is simply because you've been scared. Simply because you thought you weren't ready. Simply because you thought it needs to be someone else or there's probably someone else better equipped. And here's the reality. Everything is changing. And because everything's changing, nobody can say, I've done this for 20 years. Oh, sure, we can make broad statements like I've been working and building web applications for 20 years. But the web applications of today are completely different than the web applications of 20 years ago. The reality is you cannot be an expert in a lightweight JavaScript front end tapping to a online parse-driven you know, model infrastructure that you don't even control in terms of the servers and the infrastructure that normally you have to set up and there is no database per se, you can't be a 20-year expert in that because it hasn't existed that long. And the next generation of teachers and the next generation of neuroscientists and the next generation of 
economic professors or the people who are actually doing analysis and studies of data. Big data hasn't existed for that many years. See, the reality is the on-ramps are plentiful and, and more than, ever, than they've ever been, right? I mean, there are more on-ramps today to doing new things in new fields that didn't exist five years ago than ever before. And here's the crazy part. However old you are, if you spent the next five years figuring out some new area, if you spent the next five, six, seven years dedicating yourself to something that you've never done before, starting today, starting right now, if you started in a new space and you were clueless, you were ridiculously outpaced by anybody else, and you said, let me just start something, five years from now, if you onboarded today in something that's brand new, that's shifting, five years from now, you'd be the expert. Seven years from now, your entire world would be different. And you realize that the person that's holding you back, the person that's stopping you from taking a step into that new space where you don't know anything, the, the person that's holding you back from looking like an idiot because you don't want to be that idiot that steps into something that you don't understand, the only person holding you back from becoming an expert seven and 10 and especially 20 years from now is you. It's just you. It's not your boss. It's not your husband or wife. It's not your kids. It's not your professor. It's not your neighbor. It's not your housemate. It's no one else but you. Because you've let fear hold you back. When I stepped into the world of the web in 1995, there were very few people who were doing these kinds of things. And I still felt like, well, I don't, I don't know this stuff. I'm just starting. And you know, I felt that in 1997, then in 1999, and again in 2000, by 2003 and 2005, 2010, 2012, 2013, 2014, and even this year. It's not because I run around with tons of insecurity, though that's part of it. But it's because everything's changing all the time. And you just have to decide, are you the kind of person who wants to step into a space where you're okay to say, I don't know, and start working at something. Lean into a couple different places and find what it is that moves you. What is it that motivates you? What is it that calls to you in such a way that you say, I feel like learning this thing? Or what are the pains and the problems you've had in your past that you said, I'm just, I am so committed to fixing this or getting past this or not letting this hold me back that I'm going to stick in and move from being a novice to someone who actually understands it and knows it. The only one holding you back is you. And there's no reason to hold yourself back because the world is changing dramatically all the time. And the number of opportunities that exist today to become tomorrow's expert, the number of opportunities are plentiful. And the only question is whether or not you'll risk it to step out into a new space and move past your fear. I hope you do.